Hello and welcome to this uh, 40k tactics video. Uh, it's been actually quite a while since I've posted just some general straight 40k tactics. Um, and I think that's mainly because 7th uh, edition has you know, come out and uh, I didn't want to do 40k tactics for 6th when 7th was coming out. And then it took me a while to get settled in for 7th and uh, you know, uh, it, just things have got in the way. But now I'm going to go back and do a bit of just general 40k tactics, uh, which can, uh, if, if you're not aware, this series is just tactics that could be applied to any uh, codex. Uh, it's not uh, specific, it's just a general sort of principle of the game. Um, so, first of all, sorry I haven't posted for a little over a week. Um, as most of you are aware, I have been away on holiday. Um, and a big thank you to all of those uh, of you who said left gave me some kind messages and you know wished I had it yeah, wish me a good holiday you know I really do appreciate that I was very kind of you guys so thank you for that uh, those of you who did that um, and yeah I had a really good time so thanks a lot but I am now back and can start producing content again um, and as I said before I went on holiday I have now filmed an apocalypse battle report um, and I said that would be up now I'm back and I have now edited that so you know that apocalypse battle report should be right on the corner Having said that, the video is very, very long, um, and it's going to take quite a long time to render, and it's going to take quite a long time to upload. I don't want to do it in individual parts, I'd rather just, you know, um, I feel if I did that it would be selling you guys short, and I want you guys just to have, you know, one complete video you don't have to mess around with. So I'm going to try and render that tomorrow, upload it the day after, so um, if all goes to plan, you should expect that Apocalypse Battle Report on... Monday or Tuesday next week, if all goes to plan. Um, Show sure that a lot to look forward to. Anyway, um, what are we going to be talking about today in this 40k tactics video? Is um, looking out, sir, uh, or more specifically, uh, independent characters and in lookout, sir, and not just the rule itself, but how you can sort of exploit that to your advantage. Um, now let me just say straight off the bat, this tactic I'm going to talk about today, I consider to be very, very sweaty, cheesy if you're not aware of that expression, a very cheap, sort of cheesy, sweaty tactic. Um, and because of that, in a casual game, I would not do this strategy, because I feel it's very cheap. Um, so if I was playing a friend, we were playing for fun, you know, in my battle reports we are playing for fun, I would not do this. If I went to a tournament, I would do this. Because, you know, there, anything goes at tournaments. You're going to do your best to win. Um, and that is... A, um, so let's let's get into describing what it is then. So, essentially, um, in 40k, wounds are allocated to the closest model. So if you stick up the front, um, and far, things are firing it from the front, he will have to take the wounds on him, because he's closest. However, if you are an independent character... You can look out, sir, um, on a 2+, plus, which is obviously, you'll be pretty confident of making that. Uh, this then means, this is open to explo exploitation somewhat. And I think the best way to describe this uh, is, well no, I'll just try and describe it generally first, then I'll give you a few examples. Um, you take an independent character, put him in a squad, and, that, uh, and, he, and give him a better armor save, or an invulnerable save, than um, the rest of the squad. And what you can then do is stick him at the front, and it means that all sort of, uh, you know, menial, bad shooting at him, you can just take on his two-up armour, or, you know, good uh, armour save. And then anything nasty you don't want to take on him, or if he takes some wounds, you can just start looking out serving. And this then means you can sort of cheat your way out of uh, taking heavy losses. So, I will give you some examples now, because I don't think uh, that's very, it's kind of a bit difficult to explain, but um, if I give you some examples, I think it should become clear. So, uh, suppose you've got a squad of 30 looters, and in that squad of looters, um, you put at the front a war boss in mega armor. Uh, I don't play orcs, so sorry if I got any of my terminology wrong there. But yeah, um, let's just say you put an independent character with uh, a two-up say at the front of that squad of looters. What this then means is if, suppose, um, and especially now in 7th edition, because you have to resolve weapons um, shooting by the weapon. 
So if a ta let's say a tactical squad shoots that squad of looters, uh, first of all they decide to fire their bolters, uh, and they inflict five wounds. You if if that Meganog wasn't in there, or if he was in the middle of the squad, that would be five looters dead. Because he's at the front, you choose to take them on him. And he makes all five saves. Therefore, that's five looters who survived who wouldn't have died otherwise. Do you see what I mean? Then, because you're resolving the, map, uh, the next weapon, the next weapon that fires is the Laz Cannon in the squad. Now, that's AP2, and also it's strength 9. So, uh, let's just say the war boss was T4, just because it's an example. Um, that would instant death him. You don't want to take that on the war boss. So, you then just do a two-up look a two up lookout, sir. And that means that one looter dies. So if you had had the war boss with the two up uh, save in the middle of the squad, you would have lost uh, six looters. Because you put him at the front, you took the saves on him, then look out sir, the one you didn't want to take on him. And that then meant that five looters survived, he would have died. Do you see what I'm getting at? It's sort of a bit difficult to explain. I'll give you another example, because the point of this series is it can apply to any codex. So... In fact, I'll give you two more examples. Um, sorry if you already get it. If you already get this, um, then this might get a bit repetitive, but I'm just trying to explain it properly. I played um, a Necron player in the last, in my most recent game I played, and uh, the Necron player was doing this strategy. He would take six raves in a squad, and then put in a Destroyer Lord as an independent character, and put the De Destroyer Lord as the guy at the front of the squad. Uh, this then meant that when I fired stuff like Laz guns, um, at the Destroyer Lord, he would just take the hits on the Destroyer Lord, and he had a two-up save, and it was very difficult to bypass with a low AP weapon. Then, if I fired Laz cannons at the squad, what he'd do is just look out Sir on a two plus, and then take a three-up invulnerable save on the Raves instead. So, do you see what I'm getting at? How it's sort of an easy way to go hmm, I'd rather take a two-up armor save here and negate those wounds, or no, actually, I'd rather take it on that. Uh, I will give you one last example. Um, and that's if you were to take a, uh, a tactical squad, uh, no, let's say an assault squad of marines, and then at the front, put a space marine captain, give him artifice armor, uh, give him a storm shield, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Uh, this then means that for really bad shooting like bolters, you can just take a two up save instead of a three up save. But again, if you if you take some wounds and you want to, you know, transfer to the squad, just look out so on a two plus, and you can easily avoid guys dying who wouldn't have died otherwise. So have I made that clear? I hope I have. Um, put an independent character at the front of the squad. He will have wounds allocated to him. You can then use his better save to save guys in the squad who would have died otherwise. Uh, or if he's under threat or he's taken some wounds, you can then simply look out Sir on a 2+, plus and give him to the rest of the squad who would have died anyway. So, I hope I've made that clear. Um, anyway, so, what, what's the, what, how do I feel about this? Um, well, I think this is a very cheap tactic, because what you're doing is you're just exploiting a rule within the game uh, in a way I don't think it's intended. I don't think when they wrote that uh, look out Sir rule on independent characters... They intended it to be that way. I thought what it was was just mainly to, you know, stop a guy who was in the middle, middle of the squad. You know, it, I think it's, um, I think it's very cheap. I think it's very sweaty. Therefore, I wouldn't do this in a friendly game, but I would in a competitive tournament scene. So that's about it for today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, remember to like this video if you've enjoyed it. Um, I really can't tell you how grateful I'd be. It only takes you two seconds to like it, but it really goes a long way to support my channel. Um, and I will see you in the next couple of days with that Apocalypse Battle Report. Um, I'll see you soon with more videos as well. So bye for now.